What's up guys, it's Virginia from the New York Daily News and today I'm here live in the studio with Matthew Daddario and Alberto Rosende from Freeform's hit show, Shadow Hunters. Matt, can I call you that? Yes. Okay, <laughs> okay great. And Alberto, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. So I want to talk to you obviously about the show. Um, how did you guys sort of prepare for your roles? Initially, uh, when we first, uh, first uh, and foremost, we read the books mm -hmm. because the characters already have backgrounds and right. stories, and, and a lot of people depend on uh, that accuracy because right. there's a lot of fans of the books. So that was the first thing. And then from there, we start to adapt it and start to make it a little bit our own. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that from there on out, it sort of sort of followed the script and sort of the character was created slowly mm. over the course of the season. And that's one of the cool things about TV is you get the time to really develop a character mm. rather than have a character that's been established. Since we don't know where the end of our journey is going to be, right. every time we read a script it's kind of adding new pieces, uh, new nuances, new things you learn, mm -hmm. new things you care about. Like, yeah. oh, okay, cool, I see that this is really something that's driving him. Let's keep moving in that direction. For sure. Um, I know a lot of actors, uh, when they take on a role, some of them, I know obviously your characters have been based on a novel, but mm -hmm. did you guys do any writing backstory for yourselves to sort of like delve deeper into the role, or did you just sort of go based on what was in the novel? I, I remember focusing on how the person, like who Alec would be sort of underneath, because in the first book there's not all that much Alec stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. sort of, you know, based off of what I've read online and what I, you know, I've read about the character, sort of trying so to create, your character. yeah, for sure, <laughs> absolutely. Awesome. Uh, and then you sort of just try to say, okay, well, how would this person really be behaving and what would be concerning him? And then you go from there. Man, I did, um, in the books, I found a lot of music that Simon listened to mm -hmm. or references to music. And then from there, I built like my own playlist of things that I think Simon would, would listen, listen to, to on different okay. days. And then also a couple of friends reading the books, I was like, oh, you know, in this moment, he reminds me a lot of this guy. Right. What do I like? What do, what do I think they have in common? What is it? And then finding mm -hmm. things, and then finding another friend that I was like, oh, cool. So Simon's cool. essentially like two of my friends. You're drawing from your circle Absolutely. to develop Absolutely. your characters. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah. has Simon's playlist like affected you in any way? Like, do you has he introduced you to new artists? Um, yes and no. Okay. Uh, some artists I found because like if you go to Spotify and you click them, there's like, oh, it's similar to this. I'm like, right. okay, let me listen to that guy. Okay. Um, and then other ones, actually one of my good friends that I've kind of thought of Simon a lot as my friend Dave, he mm -hmm. listens to a lot of music that I think Simon would listen to and him okay. and I hung out a lot. Very like cool. the year before I even auditioned for the role. So I was kind of preparing so for it. Dave's like sort realizing. of your Simon muse. Yeah, yeah <laughs> especially with the music because he'd always be like, oh, listen to this new band that I just found. And yeah. I'm like, oh, this is kind of like, it sounds like it's from someone's garage, very like lo-fi, very cool, very yeah. like very quiet. I don't know. So there are different things I was able to pick from that. Okay. Yeah. And what about on set? Are you guys um, like once you make it to set, are you in character for the entire day, or are you like depends once on, the camera's off, you take? Depends break? on the day. I mean, there's mm -hmm. some days where you're filming something immediately, and then you're waiting for six hours, and then you film again. So obviously, you're not going to do that. And like the material you have too, depending if, okay. it's, if it's kind of a heavier scene. It's better to kind of not stay in character, but stay a little bit in that world yeah. for me, a little like emotionally, or just kind yeah. of. If it's a darker day, you're not jumping around, and if it's right. if it's a fun day, then it's a lot. You get to have a little you more fun. Try to stay on an even keel. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Mm -hmm. Um, what about like the physical preparation for a role? Did you guys do any like crazy like protein and carb binging, like yeah. lots of brown rice and chicken, or well, for, like, like for season out? season one was different than season two. Yeah, for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, Simon wasn't supposed to be very muscular season one, so I didn't have to worry about that as much. We right. did work out, but then season two, with the whole vampire change for me, so. yeah, we really tried to, I was in the gym, I got to set like six weeks early, five weeks early, oh my and I was with Dom every day, we were in the gym like six days a week. Oh my goodness. Yeah, going at it. What about you, Matt, same progress? Yeah, season one I had to do far more transformation mm -hmm. than season two because I was more prepared, but season one, um, a lot of running, a lot of weightlifting and eating eating right. It was pretty brutal season one. Luckily, uh, you can then maintain. And maintaining mm -hmm. is a lot easier than uh, trying to completely start transform the, habit the, the diet's right. definitely the hardest part, though. Yeah. yeah. And season two, we, had, we did less of the diet, to be honest, because we were more... We were already kind of where we needed to be. Yeah. Okay. So we got to kind of relax on some things, but if we focused on training, we trained just as hard. The diet was more to just supplement the ability to do that yeah. training right. rather than actually trying to get to a certain place. Right. Speaking of diets, before we started filming, guys, we were having a great debate about cereal. So, speaking of things that you had to, like, sort of cut out, I'm assuming... Cereal was one of them. Aw, poor you. Yeah, I was very upset. 
Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Matt? What did you have to cut out? What do you have like a cheat food, or do you guys operate on cheat days? Uh, I mean, season one, the big one was cutting out uh, bread. And carbs. Cut out carbs. Yeah. Cut out carbs makes it really easy because mm -hmm. you can't get as many calories. Uh, it's just very difficult to eat enough calories. So you know, no sugar, no no carbs. Sugar, 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 so, sugar, was sugar so hard yeah. for me. Season two, you just well, if you don't drink soda. A it's a big one. Yeah. No, no sugar, no soda yeah. is such a big one. If you just don't yeah. drink soda, you're cutting out huge amounts of just soda waste. Soda's juice, I find, right? Juice. Yeah, like it, especially yeah, of, yeah, juices if they're yeah. not actually even like you shouldn't really drink juice because of that, right? They say you should like juice oh, your vegetables. Just eat vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. Just eat uh, fruits. Eat fruits. I've, honestly, just by only drinking water, I've I haven't put on weight as a result. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm such a big like pasta girl, so like cutting out carbs is like it's very hard. I just yeah. can't it's do very it. Hard. I just can't. I was like raised on pasta, so like, pasta is amazing. And the worst thing so about good. sometimes on set is uh, they always have the you know, craft tables, but the craft tables are for everyone, not just for the actors. So right. we'll walk by and it'll be just like a bunch of cookies and brownies, yep. and then like mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for PB and J's. Yeah, so I, I do indulge, but <laughs> at 2 a.m. there's nothing better than a coffee and and. Uh, chocolate chip cookie honestly and sometimes they make them fresh and they bring them around oh nice uh, so they're like warm or sometimes they have those like midnight like the second meals or whatever after dinner and they'll be like mac and cheese with some hot sauce nice but it's such a thing you know like people so humans good. like food is such a thing for all animals right yeah. like see even how like dogs behave they're <laughs> food obsessed yeah and humans are the same way you get you get yeah because food is basically everything i imagine that people ten thousand two thousand 150 years ago, 100 years ago, we just spent their days looking for food in yeah. any way, shape, or form. I mean, it was sort of like their And, and now that it's a goal, it was a drive. Yeah. It was a drive. It was like, okay, right, like we just need to get our available. Yeah. next meal. Yeah. We have to change our eating habits. Yeah. You know, it's strange. I think no, that's I also agree. weird. Something we had to do is kind of change the eating habits and time. Yeah. For me, because we well, with night shoots, you're, you got on a completely different schedule, and then right. you're eating lunch at like 9 p.m. Yeah. You see how animated we are talking about this? This is an indication that the, the this human is our drive. brain still, definitely... Still, we haven't evolved that much, you guys. No, we do. <laughs> it's still something. Food is such a thing. I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat right now. Yeah. What, what am I going to do after this? I actually haven't had breakfast. I'm thinking about same, egg whites. Same, same, same. So. I'm thinking about egg whites. I'm thinking pasta, maybe... And cereal. <laughs> maybe pastrami. <laughs> cereal would be a good um, snack. Okay, I want to talk a little bit more about you guys as individuals. So, I know you're from Florida, yes. correct? And you are a native New Yorker, if I'm yes. not mistaken, Matt. Um, let's talk about sort of like how you guys got into the practice of acting. I did a little bit of research, so I know cool. you're basically a theater kid. Yes. Um, and you started a little bit later getting your degree in business from IU, mm -hmm. correct? correct? I want to make sure that everything I saw on Wikipedia was right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can't trust those things. Um, so has, I'm assuming acting has always been the goal for you. Well, and um, whether or not I knew it, it was. Yeah. I, I, I was more of like a sports kid. Okay. I, I played in Florida, you play sports all year round. Right. Like, I was constantly playing a sport, and then the perk of having like a place with two like, seasons. Beautiful weather, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then, what I realized is, as I got older, slowly I had to stop playing sports to keep acting. Yeah, I was like, oh, I want to do the musical, so I can't play football in the fall in high right. school. So and then that. exactly, and then oh, but I want to do the play, so I guess I can't really play soccer. Right. In the spring, and then when it came when it came time for me to start like trying to focus on what I wanted to do in college, it it, it was a pretty easy decision to be like, well, I keep. Choosing this over right. everything else. I keep dropping everything else. I to keep be dropping an actor, literally so, everything to keep yeah. acting. So why not just go for it? Awesome. Yeah. What about you? For Matt? I'm sorry. I was going to say your process and that mingled together. What about <laughs> for you, Matt? Um, honestly, I think that there's you when you're younger don't always do what uh, it is exactly what you want to do because mm -hmm. often you have some kind of opinion about yourself or how you want to be perceived, and so for you sure. don't want to yeah. you don't want to do certain things and and. In my case, I liked I like sports, and I liked uh, I like the idea of either becoming a doctor or going into some area of business or okay. economics, and that seemed right because of you know just that is how it was. So then you go and you do it, but it doesn't really actually fulfill you in the way that you thought it would. But you find it interesting, so it's sort of this like oh I do enjoy this, but it's not it's no, not I'm ideal. Not. It's not really. Yeah. And then you sort of find the thing oh this thing that I've kind of been poo pooing maybe is actually the thing that I really need to do. And so were you poo-pooing acting for a little bit? No, I wasn't. In that case, no. Um, <laughs> acting was not one of the ones that I sort of said no to. Okay. My sister had been an actor for a while, so I was aware of it. And I don't think I actually would have considered it if it wasn't for the fact that uh, she was there to sort of give the idea that it was a possibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never would have actually thought of it as an option. Because in my family, it, was, it, was, Everything. it wasn't like that, though. I mean, because like, I come from like 
Latino, like Latino parents who, like my, my parents were very supportive, but yeah. my grandparents didn't really understand it as a, okay. as a thing. So there was that kind of like, well, were your grandparents get a, more a, like, a stricter. Yeah, oh, like, when are you going to become a lawyer? So right. now you graduate from acting school, when are you going to law school? Right. But now, of course, they see it as a possibility. And like, I have younger cousins who they're very much championing to, yeah, to yeah, pursue yeah. the arts. Yeah, but the you also you got to tell them it doesn't always work so. No, so no, it doesn't. I, yes. Yeah, I think they're yeah. aware because they're also like, I think I people, got, get I got very lucky. people get the idea in their head that, oh, it's just you go and this is, oh, look, no, Alberto, there, there no problem. Is, there is no path. Yeah. It's like, not there is in other careers where you kind of can get one job that'll lead to the acting yeah. has those. I also think so much of it is, like, right place, right timing, right? Oh, I mean, absolutely. At least that's, I mean, it's like that in publishing, I know. There's so many people that want to break in, but, like, I mean, I was talking run to, in the right circles. I actually ran into a friend in Washington Square yesterday who's an actor, and he was talking about um, starting to audition in pilot season, how he didn't get couple auditions I was like well if you book one audition then you're not available for the one that you actually might be right for right. because you're like oh no I booked this pilot so now I'm shooting this but totally. so it was one of those things that everything you miss is just leading to a better opportunity yeah to see it that way interesting not it'll, it'll get really heavy a glass half full perspective yeah, exactly. you guys um I know that the show <laughs> is filming in Toronto mm -hmm. yes. so what has that been like sort of like living out of a suitcase well, Assuming we, that that's what well, you guys no, are we, doing. No, we've got our apartments. We've moved there. Yeah, okay. we, we live there. You yeah, are we live there. We live in Toronto. Toronto residents. And now. Toronto's <laughs> got good, good food, know, good drinks. So I like I like Toronto a lot. Yeah. I always I always equate it to like New York if New York were still in college. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry. That okay? Yeah. No. So, Torontonians. No. He means that in the best it's way not in possible. A negative way. The thing is, <laughs> no. Toronto's, Toronto's a younger city. It's yeah. a younger city. It's, it's the transformation over the past. I mean, if you talk to, we talk to people from there mm -hmm. who've lived there their whole lives. I mean, some of them are baffled about like eight years ago they built road yeah. systems, ten, twenty years ago, and had no idea that it was going to be the like this. The city has completely packed. transformed. I mean, it's, I mean it's in the last incredible. six months from season one to season two, they've seen an influx of so many new residents and so many people. The city's growing at a rate I don't think they're ready for. It. Skyscrapers. Yeah. It's crazy. It's Crazy. It's a really cool place to be. Very yeah. cool. It'll be interesting to see in like 20 years where yeah. Toronto's at. Yeah. Um, speaking of Toronto, I wanted to talk about um, sort of the differences between New York and Toronto. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously you guys are, you both live in New York, so you're familiar with the city. Mm -hmm. um, are there, I don't know, like things that, I guess ultimately the question is like the competition between New York and Toronto, which one well, wins? New, New York is an older city. I mean, yeah. it's not old by European standards, but you're talking about, I mean, it's just, there's just a massive it's difference. Established. Yeah. As, as the established, uh, I mean, New York has been an important, it's just hard to compare the two things. Yeah. I, it's just, also New York is sort of almost incomprehensibly massive. Yeah. I mean, it just, it reminds me of. Massive and small all at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's like, oh, there's only certain Asian cities, and recently Sao Paulo kind of gave me a similar vibe of just this yeah. is, except Sao Paulo is more sprawl, isn't it? But like, it's just a big city. Yeah. And Toronto's not quite not that there. size. To me, it's Toronto still kind of has like a, a, sm a not small, small town, town feel. feel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah. you get so much more of that sometimes. Yeah. Like being in Toronto is, is, is more relaxing and yes. less, you know, but... Uh, we like Toronto, so I'm not. I haven't, I haven't felt overwhelmed by Toronto in a way that you can feel overwhelmed by by New York sometimes. Right. Just by walking out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I just want to ask two New York centric questions. I know we're not necessarily making a competition between New York and Toronto, but for the best that we don't. Yeah. <laughs> just to like sort of like probe a little bit, if you had to choose between, uh, let's say junk food, if you will, do they eat futsan in? Poutine. Yes. Poutine. Is I've actually never had. You haven't. Our diets don't really allow for. Oh no! Protein. Well, on a cheat day, I'll have to have it. I used to eat protein it. when I was younger because I like gravy. Yeah, <laughs> I get yeah. down with some poutine. It's yeah. delicious. Gravy. Um. Okay. Well, then I can't ask my food question since you haven't had it yet. But um, let's just say. I don't know. I was gonna ask you no, like, ask, city ask. or beach life. It's tough. I was gonna say New York pizza or poutine, but like if you haven't had I would, it, I, I would regardless most likely still choose pizza. New York pizza. Pizza is a it's a cheese pizza. food. You can't compare other foods to pizza. It's no, crazy. no. Also like, like fries pizza. with gravy versus like pizza. pizza. Also pizza. like, pizza. like pizza. something like really cool foods. about pizza in New York is like you can stop by like a nine nine cent place, get a slice, oh, and keep yeah. walking. Yes, I sure. do like that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that after this. But like. It, poutine, I don't, I don't know that it's, it's a thing and it's all messy and you, 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 so good though. I mean, it, it looks amazing, like but this. it doesn't feel like as on the go. Toronto version of a sloppy Joe, but it isn't on yes. the go. It's not, it's right. not. It doesn't feel as on the go as pizza. So Very I would true. still choose New York pizza. Um, okay, well, since I get, oh well, okay, last question actually. Yes. Any interest in Broadway, and is there a show that you guys are dying to see? Of course, we're interested. Yeah, in I'm huge. I haven't, I haven't looked at right now to be honest. Um, 
I have, I haven't either. I know there are a bunch of like theater companies that I like. Yeah. Look gotta at. look into it. Gotta look into it. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta check it out. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for this interview, and thanks for tuning in, you guys.